Above the polling booths, the traditional pan-Slavic colours of Slovakia's flag. The election here was framed as about where this nation sees itself in that history, either looking towards the West or tilting back to the red, white and blue of Russia. The choice between a return to the past, which is what uh, Mr Fico is offering, uh, a road to international isolation, perhaps uh, a shift eastwards in our foreign policy, or we can choose the future. The alternative one, former Prime Minister Robert Fitzo secured 24% of the vote and can now try to form a coalition government. A stunning return for a man who resigned in 2018 following the murder of a Slovakian journalist. And his win is also a shock to the system for Ukraine because Slovakia has sent missiles, helicopters and fighter jets since the start of the war and Fitzo has signaled a very different approach. We are a peaceful country. We will not send a single round to Ukraine and we will push for the European Union to use all its weight and support peace talks as quickly as possible. It is a crack in Eastern European support to Ukraine. As we go into uh, European Parliament elections, these very polarized societies, like in Slovakia, you know, are prone to be mismanipulated into um, by populist voters into this kind of stance against military support, which is a stance against continuation of the, of the war. This is just the latest bit of bad news for Kyiv, as the war meets a new enemy: Western domestic politics, economics, and elections. Slovakia, along with Hungary and Poland, have all banned the importation of Ukrainian grain in order to protect their farmers who've been hit by cheap grain flooding the market. With Kyiv attacking Warsaw's stance, Poland's Prime Minister announced he would no longer send weapons to Ukraine. Mateusz Morawiecki has elections in a fortnight, and he's worried about this, thousands marching in opposition to his party in the capital today. Leader Donald Tusk has called for unwavering military aid to Ukraine, and the former EU commissioner will be a much more comfortable proposition for both Brussels and Kyiv. And it's not just been a bad weekend for Ukraine in Europe. The bill is passed. And without in the US, the Congress applauded a last-minute deal that table. stopped the government from shutting down, but it didn't include extra funding for Ukraine. President Biden addressed that issue in a speech today. We cannot, under any circumstance, allow American support for Ukraine to be interrupted. <laughs> In Kyiv today, citizens and soldiers stood to mark the Day of the Defenders. Amid the blue and yellow, the stars and stripes. Here, they're well aware of the need for friends overseas. A moment for many to reflect on not just the pain of 20 months of war, but the uncertainty ahead as Ukraine hopes to keep its army of allies together.